what he gave for most of two generations are Nebraska keepsakes. Courage slowly to the line of scrimmage on the four-yard line of North Carolina State. Ross in motion, Courage on the keeper, he's in for the touchdown! Autumn in Lincoln, Memorial Stadium, 1962. The voice, Bob Zenner, Nebraska's outstanding sportscaster. These are the golden gridiron moments, just as they happen, from broadcasts of one of the great seasons of Cornhusker football. This is the story of a football team that made the comeback of the year in the Midlands. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, once proud rulers of Great Plains football, led from the depths to prosperity by a 46-year-old magician, Bob Devaney. After winning four Skyline Conference titles at Wyoming in five years, the combination wizard humorist took the reins of the Huskers in Lincoln. He produced nine victories, most in one season since 1905, and captured the hearts of Nebraskans from the Panhandle to the Missouri River. With the remnants of a team which had won only three against six losses and a tie in 1961, Devaney had a realistic outlook as his first Nebraska squad opened against the University of South Dakota. We are looking forward uh, with a great deal of anticipation uh, the opening of our football season against the University of South Dakota here in Lincoln at Memorial Stadium. Uh, we're anxious to show this team to our fans and hope that uh, in this first showing we can come up to the expectations that uh, have been set out for us. Nebraska first and ten on the Michigan 16. 7.45 left in the game. Clary's hands off to Thornton, has a hole at the ten, driving at the five, the two, the one, touchdown, Bill Thunder Thornton! Thornton with his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Huskers may have nailed it down as they lead Michigan 25 to 13. down 10. Miami with the football on the University of Nebraska 43-yard line. Shotgun offense, fire back to throw, and the pass is working up and intercepted by Bob Brown. The big guy driving straight up field at the 43-yard line. The ball is deflected and they're going crazy on the Husker sideline across the way. And if the Huskers can hang on for exactly 58 seconds, they will win the 1962 Gotham Ball game. The crowd chanting out the seconds. Let's pick it up. Keeps the ball, breaks off the right side. He's at the 40. He's at midfield. Down to the 40. Still in his feet at the 30. 25, 20, 10. It's over for a touchdown. And the Big Red of Nebraska will go back to Lincoln, Nebraska, happy tonight because they have won the 30th annual Orange Bowl Classic. As they operate from their own five, due to under calling signals and split to the right side. Due to fakes, he's back to the end zone to throw. Fires a deep one for White. He's got it for 35, the 40, 45. He's off to the races. They won't catch him. All the way. Freeman White for the touchdown. Nebraska has scored from 95 yards away, and that's a new school record. Pass is incomplete at the 50, and ladies and gentlemen, it's a perfect season. Nebraska 21, Oklahoma 9. A dramatic moment in Cornhusker history as Coach Bob Devaney gets the victory ride on the shoulders of his valiant Cornhusker. Coach Bob Devaney has had a shower. He is dripping wet. Coach, uh, you're all wet. Do you enjoy this kind of a treatment after a ball game? Well, anytime we can go 10 and nothing, why, well, I'll take that shower and my clothes on very gratefully. A truly big night and a big page in Orange Bowl history as results received from the Cotton and Rose Bowls have put the national championship on the line here tonight. It's Gary Taggy calling signals after a 67-yard march. And on the quarterback keeper, he dives for the goal line, making sure his plunge is across the goal line. Coach Bob Devaney's unbeaten Nebraska Cornhuskers are number one. 1970 National Collegiate Football Champions of America. The Black's wording is as follows. The University of Nebraska, 1970 football team. 
champions of the Big Eight Conference, victor in the 1971 Orange Bowl, and picked by the Associated Press, number one team of the nation. College football 1971, the game for number one. Unbeaten and untied Nebraska versus unbeaten and untied Oklahoma. Today, it's the showcase of college football. Joe Wiley in the kick. Wiley stands at his own 24, waits for the snap. Rogers deep for Nebraska. Here's Wiley's kick, it's high. It holds up there, Rogers takes the ball at the 30. He's hit and got away, back up field to the 35, to the 40, he's to the 45. He's to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 20, to the 10. He's all the way home. Holy moly. Man, woman, and child did that. Put him in the aisles. Johnny the Jet Rogers just tore him loose from their shoes. Here in the Orange Bowl tonight, the finest football team in Nebraska history and possibly the finest in the history of college football crushed the Alabama Crimson Tide 38-6. to It was the Bears' worst defeat at Alabama, Bob Devaney's dream of a lifetime, and Nebraska's finest hour as they became the most unanimous national champion in modern times. You ought to run for something in this state. Bob is a legend in the state of Nebraska in his own time. There's no question about it. And I was watching him just a little bit ago. He was staring at his glass of water and he was trying to decide whether to walk on it or part it. <laughs> Tis better to give than to receive, yes indeed. Tis better to give than to receive, much better. If you want to be forgiven and know the joys of living, tis better to give than to receive. Now do it. Thank you. And on this first day, he is no longer among us. We pause not so much to recall the glorious Saturday afternoons, rather the vivacity Bob Devaney delivered to a people, once uncomfortable with their own charming simplicity. His first quarterback was Dennis Claridge. Liked him, just plain liked him. I don't know of anybody that didn't meet Bob or was around him for five minutes, 10 minutes that didn't like him. Devaney's time though momentous to the legions who came with an incredible eminence to revere him, was in fact conducted by a single simple fellow of overwhelming modesty. Omaha's own Adrian Fiala played on some of Devaney's best defensive teams. Even if he would have been mildly successful, he still would have uh, had the great following that he did because he just he had that, uh, he had that uh, charisma about him that, uh, that most people just uh, uh, would latch on to. And... Uh, and, and go for the ride. Maybe it was because he knew struggle longer than most. As a player, in his first game for Alma back in 1936, he lost three teeth. Bob was an economics major, yet when he left college four years later, Devaney still owed them $350. As a high school baseball coach, Bob gave up on a pitcher, moved him and his weak bat to first base. Years later, that player, Bob Brühl, became an all-star right-hander with the Braves. Before coaching, Devaney did piecework in a Chevrolet foundry. His grandfather was a tugboat captain. Bob had that ability, and not many people do, where he could visit with the President of the United States, the Governor of Nebraska, he could visit with uh, the local uh, president of uh, you know the uh, union down here, uh, Burlington Yards, or he could sit down and at, at the corner of the bar and talk with somebody who had just maybe lost his job. He had that ability uh, to do that sort of thing, and I think people in Nebraska uh, realized that he was he was just a genuine person in that regard. I mean, there was there was no fluff about Bob Devaney. Coach, you mentioned Marcus Dupree. He's only a freshman. 
People say there's good. We got to look at him for another three years. Are there some dangers involved in that kind of thing? I mean, the danger implicit is that he's going to, you know, be a tough football player. But I'm talking about bringing him along over the next three I years. Think the best thing would be to have him flunk out. <laughs> That personality, penchant for self-deprecating humor and builder's genius, made in January of 1962 for a sound union with Nebraska and its suffering football fortunes. Over the six years Devaney coached Wyoming teams earned respect, the Huskers had been intransigent failures. 17 of their previous 21 seasons were losers. He first came in, uh, we met in the basement of Sella Quadrangle and a uh, meeting was called and Tippy Dye introduced he and Jim Ross. Everybody you know, knew there was gonna be a change and we didn't know who, everybody was in the newspaper uh, except Bob Devaney. I, I'd never heard of the guy to be honest with you. And, and he came in and probably talked to us for five minutes to 10 minutes and uh, he was very light, uh, but very sincere and very honest. Uh, I don't think he pulled any punches, but uh, he let you know that uh, things were going to be different and we were going to win. And, and that was the expectation, but we were going to do it in a maybe a little more fun way. You believed him. You wanted to believe. You weren't successful the year or two or three before, and here was a guy who came in that said you were going to be successful, and uh, you wanted to believe, and so you believed. Third down three. Nebraska on the 12-yard line of North Carolina State. One minute, 15 seconds left. Yugi split right. Calm and calculating, Claridge takes it off the tee, pitches out to Stewie, he's got a block, cuts in at the 10, to the 5, the 2, the 1, he's gone! As his teams won, Devaney became a celebrity. That is Stewie with his second touchdown of the second half, Memorial Stadium is Bedlam! His humility, legendary. Telegram, received a telegram today. Dear Bob, congratulations, you have become our number one customer Signed, J.P. Witherspoon, President and Chairman of the Board of the Seagram's Distilling Company. <laughs> His number never left the phone book. When they got here, Bob and Phyllis put down money for a plain Jane house on Lincoln's tree-lined C Street. The Devaneys were neighbors there until the Clinton administration. To his own prosperity, he would often credit luck. Situations trigger success, he'd offer. On his immense popularity, He'd quip that the size of his own funeral would depend generally on the weather. Longtime assistant coach John Melton. And there was always humor in our practice. You know, like for instance, at the end of the practice, Bob might, he calls them all in together and he might tell them a story or something. Or he'd say, hey, go take a couple laps around Don Bryant and go on in. You know, things like that. And it'd break up the kids and they always left on the, on the high note. Well, I asked John to send down a group of freshmen and he set me down 11 of the biggest, fattest, slowest kids he had, see? Well, now I, I, don't, I don't like to try to pass the blame on, but, but you can see that with these fellas out there to practice again, even as fine a kicking coach as I am, there, there can be some problems. He reacted to uh, uh, different situations in different ways, but it always seemed to be you know, in a positive way. He was a good guy, he was a positive guy, and, and uh, whatever happened, I think he was gonna make the best of it. Devaney shook off the significance of the separation between his elite fraternity of peers, Bryant, Royal, McKay, from those who toiled in the coaching trade. I think he never forgot the players that played for him. Uh, I don't think he forgot the donors when it wasn't fashionable to be donors. I don't think he forgot faculty and, and administration that helped. Uh, you know, and that's, that's modesty too, is to recognize those people that have helped you along the way and, and, and made you what you are. He never admitted his gift. That something which he and the other gifted could not alter, could not teach, nor hand down to others, and invariably always fumbled to explain. Coach, when you put your team on the field at Nebraska, what type of a boy do you want playing football for you? Well, we like... Uh... A big, fast, tough kid who likes to hit people. And also, I might add, we'd like a boy who has a, a good amount of intelligence because football is not just a game of brawn or muscle. It is also a game of brain. And so we like a combination of quite a few things. We don't always get that combination, but that's what we aim for. His troops were hypnotized by his uncanny capacity to motivate. Joe Blaha was an All-America defensive back 
on Devaney's national title teams. He made you feel like he really, really cared, and I think he did. I, I don't think it was just a, a feeling that he presented more than the way he would talk to you and, and the way he would treat you. Uh, he treated you like a young man. Once tiring of a lackluster effort by a talented defensive end, Devaney packed up that kid's uniform, presented it to him, and offered some advice. We suggest golf. That way you can use your strength without fear of injury. Sufficiently induced, the kid eventually made his way into the College Football Hall of Fame by the name of Bob Brown. The thing that he imbibed in me was give it your best and, and don't ever quit. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and go until that final bell is rung and then it's over. You know, they talk about the gleam in his eye and things like that, but he was a good guy who could look you in the eye and you, you felt that he was listening to you, that he believed in you. Uh, but there was a twinkle there that, uh, you know, let you know that life was fun too. He was never uh, uh, distant. I mean, he'd come up and, Joe, how you doing? Or, Johnny, how you doing? And you were just treated equally and, and fairly all the time. And if you had a problem, you, you could always go to, to uh, his door and, and ask him anything. And, and you know, if you, uh, if you were homesick, he was always there for you. And he, and he really did treat you almost like a, like a, a father would treat you. Today, Nebraskans, auspicious enough to have somehow connected with this man, labor in vain to capture the essence of what his life here came to express. It began with victories, which led to championships. They are the permanent symbols of an athletics venue, which bears his name that his vision brought to fruition. The glorious achievements of his hand-picked successors. The real presence of the scores of talented young men and women who by him came or stayed here who live his legacy of giving back a modest ration of what was received. Yet there remains, it seems, a more powerful cause for this moment of sadness. He was the spirit of a people who, before he came to be with us, may have blushed at their own modesty. We grew to love Bob Devaney because, even as he delivered to us such greatness, he endured like us, endearingly common, uncommonly proud, devotedly generous. It's better to give than to receive. Yes, indeed. It is better to give than to receive. Much better if you want to be forgiven and know the joys of living. It is better to give than to receive. <laughs>